Hey, my name is Al Gettler, and I'm your host of Leader Be Led Web TV for Leaders. Now, we've taken an interview with Hugh McLeod from GapingVoid.com, and we split it into two pieces so that you have plenty of time to really listen to what Hugh says about his thoughts on creativity and enjoy the stories that he tells, because I found him to be a delight. So with that, here's my second part of the interview with Hugh McLeod of GapingVoid.com. When I was a kid, I was living in London, and I knew this guy, an American film director, who was living ab above my mother's apartment, uh -huh. and he was he was in there filming a movie. His name was Tim Burton. He's a big. <laughs> yeah. And this is this is before he was famous, right? Yeah. yeah. And he this one he was filming his first Batman movie, with, with uh, remember Jack Nicholson as the Joker. Oh yeah, sure. Anyways, he said, uh, "Hey, why don't you come up on Thursday have a cocktail or something?" I said, "Okay, fine." I was you know I was in my early twenties. I was legally allowed to do that. Yeah. And I went upstairs, knocked on his door, came in. And he he had his wife there. And he's watching television, you know, like like some some television show, like like a like a, a nighttime game show or something. I can't remember. Yeah. No, no, nothing, nothing, nothing heavy, you know, just like you know, some some nice thing on the BBC. And I was kind of I was kind of struck. This guy is like Tim Burton. He should be like, should be like writing a symphony or something. What's he doing? Just watching TV, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny you say that about Batman too. The latest Batman movie, the, the special features uh, on on the on the uh, DVDs, they have a whole feature on the Batmobile, the the ages of the Batmobile, right. and some of the guys who were most instrumental in building the Batmobiles, they asked them what kind of cars they drove, and mm -hmm. like you know half of them drove Honda CRVs. Right, because <laughs> yeah, but I was but but anyway, it was a good lesson for me because I realized yeah, you know even even like even like people of people of Tim Burton's caliber can just like be normal and boring and it's okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it kind of balances it. Because when I was working in advertising, you know, back when I was a kid, I thought, oh, well, after I get my done with my job in advertising, I got to go home and write my novel or whatever it is. Or, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and, and I mean, my goodness, I'm, su I'm surprised I made it till 30. I, was so, I put myself so, under so much pressure. Yeah, right. Uh, but that, that's, that's just an observation about, uh, the way the way the world works, you know. Right. So so that's that's kind of. Well, we have time to look at one more cartoon, and then I want to talk a bit about the business end of things before we let you go. So okay. uh, I mean, this is a, is to me a really important message. So if you could take us through what your thought process was on this. Yeah, it's it's this idea of inputs and outputs. You know, the way to be inspired is to inspire the people, and the way to inspire other people is to be inspired yourself. So it's kind of like a circular process where you, you you look at art and then you make art you read and then you write you know you you build your own thing but you also admire other people i'll tell you funny you know it's like uh if you look at like really great cartoonists like you know the real good ones like saul steinberg or chris ware or, you know the really the real my the real masters right mm -hmm. yep yep is uh the biggest fanboys of the masters are other masters it's only the second raiders who, who go around bitching about how the how the masters are all overrated. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely, I do. It, so, what, what's unique about what you guys are doing? You mentioned Jason, and you mentioned yeah. um, I mentioned the website earlier. And actually, I met Jason via email because I gave him some feedback on your new website, which I think rocks. Oh, well, thank you. I think it's a really good website. But one of the other things that I want to mention, I mean, you guys, you guys are you're running a business, you know. And, yeah, and we are. Yeah. Even though you're, you're, you know, quote unquote, the artist living in the, you know, Miami lifestyle, whatever that may be. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Moo is Moo is a business card company or a paper company. I'm just, um, you know, holding this up to show this is how I got this delivered. But, but these are um, the business cards that I use, and I got to tell you, I am blown away by the reaction I get from the business cards that feature your artwork. Um, every one of my cards, uh, you know, in, in a package has a different image on it. I have people collecting, trading, fighting over them, but they're pieces of your artwork, and I think it's a brilliant business move on your part to uh, to bring that to the to the business masses. And I'm not sure how many people, are, you know, uh, are, are using them yet, but I want to urge people to go oh. to moo.com and check it out. Are you selling a lot of these cards right now? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yes, we are. It's, it's, I, I, you know, we, like I said, I got my start drawing cartoons in the back of business cards and yeah. I thought I'd kind of like, and to me that was a very kind of fun, positive thing to do because, you know, especially at the time as a young adult, young, you know, single guy in New York, you know, 
And do you want to just like hand out a regular business card to a cute girl at the bar saying, hi, I'm a lawyer, please call me. You want, you want something to kind of right. shake it up. And I, and I just, what we try to do is just try to kind of scale that experience and let other people do that. But yeah, Moo, Moo is, a, is founded by a, a British guy, Richard Moross, who I knew back when I lived in London. And he's a tremendously, you know, fun, interesting kind of entrepreneur. And he's taken, he had this very simple idea that, that people like, you know, people actually like to hand out business cards. So why not make it easy for them to do it? Oh, it's you know? awesome. It's just, a, it's a, it's a yeah. great, it's a great way to do it. And, and, uh, you know, one of my favorite ones I, I held up uh, before, but everything is marketing. Your job is marketing. Your product is marketing. Your dog is marketing. Your mother is marketing. Your daddy is marketing. I <laughs> your mean, daddy is marketing. this is one of the, one yeah. of the, one of the fan yeah. favorites, but let's talk, you know, a bit about, you know, we go from business cards to Apple. The other day, yeah. folks from Apple came and visited your studio. That's pretty it incredible. Did. Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, okay. Well, I take, well, we have, as you know, and you're a subscriber, we have this newsletter that we send out to, you know, tens of thousands of people every day. Right. And uh, we have a following. And, and the thing is, the thing is, even with Apple, and, you know, a lot of these people, um, you know, they're not hipsters. They're people in business. And, and people in business, all what we find is they all have the same problems, including Apple, you know. Right. And, and so they just came over to... Uh, Basically, they came over just like, "Hey, here's what we do, you know, and here's here's how we apply creativity. You obviously do the same because you know you're Apple, for heaven's sake, uh, and that's what we do. And 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 so we're so so we kind of like share what we learn along the way with with other companies because you know the thing is, all businesses have the same problem. They all have the same problem. Sure." And it's just, you know, how, how is this interesting? How is this valuable? How is this meaningful? How do we keep it going? How, right. do, we, how, do, we, how do we get to the next stage before we implode or collapse on our own weight? Right. How do, I, mean, I mean, you're Apple. It's like, okay, well, we made our first, you know, three quarters of a trillion dollars. Now, how do we make our next three quarters of a trillion dollars? I mean, how many people can we actually realistically sell iPhones to? How do, how do we stay relevant? I'm, you know, ho holy smoke, I'm 35 years old, I'm 45 years old, I'm 52 years old. How do I stay relevant? Right. How do, how do I stay interesting? How do I, you know, and it's, if you don't mind me saying, it's exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and so we, we try to, and what we try to do is we try to uh, share what we've learned. And, and, and a lot of it's just purpose, you know, kind of like saying, I mean, one of the reasons, we're, you know, Jason and I are down in Miami is because, we're not from here, so we don't really, if we're, you know, we both spent time, he's from New York originally, I spent time there, you know. Mm -hmm. If we live in New York, we spend a lot more time trying to go to the right restaurants and trying to go to the right parties, trying right. to, you know, you know, get invited to the right country clubs. But down here, we don't care. <laughs> it's a beach. Right. right. You, know, you, you, go, you know, the restaurant scene is fair to middling at best, you know. It's like, there's, you know, it's, it's just very, we, you know, we wear flip-flops everywhere. So... We don't really have this kind of like, you know, idealized, you know, if you move to somewhere like San Francisco or London or Moscow, let's say you got sent to Moscow mm -hmm. as a newspaper man, you'd expect to have a certain experience. Like, oh, I have to have a, I need to have an affair with a Russian spy or, you know, <laughs> I have to do something interesting. But in Miami, you don't have to do anything interesting. You just have to get, you know. Yeah, but but yet you guys are really putting together a, a, a business here, and so oh, yes. what Apple did coming to your place. I mean, really anybody could do. Uh, obviously, there's you know you have workshops, you have you have speaking engagements, but you have also some pretty uh, creative and fun stuff. O over your shoulder, you have uh, artwork that you can buy for your office. Yeah, um, yes. you, yeah. You just announced the other day a product that I that I can't wait to put on my laptop, and that is laptop art, where the lid opens up, and you're in a you're in a coffee shop, or you're in some place working, and that can represent a thought that you've created on the back of your laptop. I think that's brilliant. The laptop. Yeah, sticker, art. stickers are well. These these aren't just stickers. They they are. I, I can't show you one because. Oh, that's okay. I can't, yeah. Uh, but instead of like a normal sticker with you know the size of a business card. They're actually big enough to cover the entire, so they're almost like a skin, actually. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so it's like a way of like if you're at Starbucks or in a, at a board meeting or, or like sitting around the board boardroom meeting, and you want to make a you want to make a really strong statement about what you believe in, 
Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's really a smart idea. It's a great product. And that's what I love about what you do, Hugh. You're combining your artwork, which is uniquely yours, with a really great business concept that um, I find to be, uh, you know, just entertaining as well as thought-provoking, educational. I was telling Jason when I was talking to him via email that, um, you know, I got to know your art. I've really, probably about the past year or so, I've gotten mm. really to be aware of your artwork. But after emailing him one night, I went upstairs and put on a T-shirt for bed, and it was a rack space T-shirt, and I hadn't even realized it. Uh, it was uh, Turn Your Awesome On. Um, with, with yeah, your, Get Your Awesome On. Get Your yeah. Awesome On with, with your image on it. And, uh, you know, I hadn't even realized that your artwork had gotten to the level where I'd been, picked it up at a conference someplace. And oh, you got that at South by Southwest two years ago. That was, that was uh, we did a T-shirt. Yeah, that's funny. That was a funny gig for us because, you know, it was a four five-day event. Uh, we, we made, they made more than enough T-shirts for the event for all five days. But there was a stampede and they all went to the first day. And I felt like, you know, there's a queue going out the door out of, out of the conference hall, which is kind of, you don't see very often, you don't see very often unless, you know, like some celebrity shows up. Right. So, uh, and that was like, because, you know, most swag is, you know, fairly, uh, you know, just, just has a kind of logo, you know, you know, like, like, you know, just like the, you know, hipster startup logo. Right. But, and that, and that's. Okay, I guess, but I, I you know, I, I, I want, I want my messages to kind of transcend the, the meaning of the company. I, I, no, I don't, want, not the meaning of the company, but I want them to trans. I want them to be higher than just the here's why you should buy our product, or here's a. It has to be because you think of like a, a company like Rackspace, which has like you know five thousand people working for them. Mm -hmm. They, they all have jobs. You know, they all have wives and husbands and families and kids and cars and mortgages and. And they, and they all will die one day and they all want to say, I want this stuff to be meaningful. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, in spite of all the, all the crap we've got to do, you know, every day. And, you know, you're taking swag to a different level. And I like that. I like yeah, that a lot. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, if you can boil it down for me, Hugh, before we go, I mean, the five reasons why I'd go to gapingvoid.com and the five reasons why I'd get in touch with you and Jason and what you do for our company. Oh boy. <laughs> oh dear. No pressure. <laughs> I'd say I'd say the, the the reason the reason to go visit Gabe I don't need five reasons I'll, I'll give you like one or two. All right, that's great. The first the first the first reason is like to visit Gabe Boy is because I think we have a an, a very evolved sense of where the business of lang uh, the language of business is going, mm -hmm. and we, we feel that being able to do. You know, evolution of business and marketing is an evolution of language, and I think we're on the kind of more on the cutting edge of that. Uh, I'd say hire us, I suppose, because we make art that transforms companies, and that's and we 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 connect people, we ignite people in a way an office memo doesn't, in a way a million dollar. We can do it with a single piece of art as opposed to spending millions and millions of dollars on advertising campaigns and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's a way of embedding ideas into cultures and changing them for the better. And that's what we're very, very good at. And, and it's, very, it's, it's, very, it's, it's very disruptive because, you know, when it works, it works really well and it works very inexpensively compared to traditional marketing, I think. Well, I can't argue with anything you said, Hugh. I, it's been a thrill having you on the show. I'm going to ask you. you to stay on the line here for a second. Well, I'll say uh, goodbye to our audience here. But uh, Thanks, audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good. So, folks, that wraps up another edition of Leader Be Led. Uh, my guest, Hugh McLeod, just, I could talk to him for hours. His creative process is, is, is just fantastic, and his results are amazing. Sign up for his newsletter at gapingvoid.com. Check out some of the, the bling he has for sale, uh, sale there, as well as some of the ways he can really help you get your message across for your company. With that, Tell your friends about us. We'll see you soon in another edition of Leader Be Led. Thanks, folks.